Hello viewers, today we will learn about answers of some multiple choice questions on the topic of stereochemistry. This is very important topic for the students of BTEC first year especially and also for BSc and class 11 and 12th grade students who are appearing for the NEET exams. So let's see. The first question here is that which of the following is an alkane which can exhibit optical activity so here you can see in the right part right hand side there is a structure with the options as you can see with the structures that the right uh, option should be option a that is 3 methyl hexane now why the structure is there because to make you understand that for a molecule or a compound to be optically active the compound must have a chiral center at least okay so in the compound if i can uh, show you here with the compound if you can have a look at the carbon center this one this carbon is attached with four different groups one hydrogen one methyl one ethyl and one propyl group so that makes this carbon chiral carbon that's why being alkane this compound or molecule is able to exhibit optical activity so option a is the right answer for these questions so there can be different question or the answer can be different but the uh, concept should be that you have to go for the chiral center within that compound if there is chiral center the molecule will be optically active next we see the second question it is what is the molecular formula for, a, for the alkane of lowest molecular weight which possesses a stereogenic center okay so there are different alkanes over here with a dif uh, different molecular formula now the lowest molecular weight containing uh, alkane having the stereo cent stereogenic center should be option d that is c7h16 next question is which of the following group has the highest priority according to the Kahn Ingold Prelog sequence rules. So you know in the in the Kahn Ingold Prelog sequence rule, there the functional groups have been arranged in order uh, with the uh, with the priority when we will assign the R S uh, nomenclature of uh, a particular chiral compound. So according to that sequence rule, the right answer should be here among these four groups the highest priority group should be option A that is CH2Cl. Next is homologous series of alkanols have the general formula. So for alkanols what should be the general formula uh, for homologous series? So the right option is option C as you can see that Cn h 2 n plus 2 O. Okay so that is the general formula of alkanols with OH functional groups. Now next question is which of the following can make difference in optical isomers so if some compounds are optical isomers then what can make difference in those compounds how we can differentiate so the options are heat polarized light temperature and pressure the right answer should be option b the polarized light next in Fisher projection formula, the horizontal line is so. What the horizon? We, we know that in Fisher projection formula, there is the vertical line and a horizontal line, or it can be more in number in, in terms of horizontal lines. Anyway, so what does the horizontal line depicts or uh, uh, signify? Options are option A above the plane of the paper toward you, option B on the plane of the paper option c behind the plane of the paper that is away from you and none of this so the right answer is option a that it denotes or it signifies above the plane of the paper that is it it shows towards you the the any functional group which lies around uh, along the horizontal line that are above the plane of the paper and that's uh, uh, pointed towards you so option a is the right answer Next is how many stereoisomers are possible for 2,3-dibromopentane? Now the right answer of this question is option 
D that is four stereo isomers are possible for this two three dibromopentane uh, compound. Next is which among the following does not exhibit geometrical isomerism? Okay, does not exhibit the geometrical isomerism. The right answer is option A that is one hexene. It don't show the geometrical isomerism. Another question, this is related to question 7 also, that how many stereo centers are there in 2,3-dibromopentane? And we know that uh, uh, with the presence of stereo centers, maximum there can be 2 to the power n number of stereo isomers. So in that case, as we have uh, the four stereo isomers possible for 2,3-dibromopentane as we have learned in uh, question 7, so here the answer should be Option C, that is, two stereo centers are there in 2,3-dibromopentane. That's why we get four stereo isomers. Tenth question is, for MX4, MX6, there, the geometry is octahedral geometry. Now, the question is, how many XMX bonds are there in MX6 compounds mm -hmm. at 180 degrees? Okay, this is a bit tricky. So you have to consider uh, for the octahedral geometry on the on the square plane and also the uh, above and below uh, uh, ligands as well. So the right answer for this one should be three. That is, three x m x bonds are there at 180 degree in m x six compounds. Next is cobalt is sp3 d2 hybridized in co na3 whole 6 3 plus this coordination complex now find its geometry what should be the geometry of this kind of uh, molecule okay so the right answer for this one should be the octahedral geometry as we can see that this, this depicts like uh, m uh, a6 kind of uh, compound so with this hybridization of sp3 d2 it goes very well with the octahedral geometry next is how many geometrical isomers are possible for the complex cobalt oh2 ox brcl minus now here ox means uh, the oxalate group uh, so the right answer for this question is the four that there, there is there is four stereo isomers possible there are four stereo isomers uh, for this complex so option d is the right answer another one is how many geometrical isomers are possible for the complex chromium ethylene diamine bis ethylene diamine and bis cyano complex okay the cation complex so so what should be or how many geometrical isomers are possible the answer is two that is option b that two geometrical isomers are possible for such complex. Then how many geometrical isomers can exist for MA3B type of complex? So you have to be very careful for this kind of complex because there can be uh, different isomers as well. But in terms of geometrical isomer, how many uh, isomers can exist in this kind of complex? This is so there can be only one kind of uh, geometrical isomers are there so this is uh, option d is the right answer for this next comes how many geometrical isomers can exist for ma4b2 complex so for ma4b2 complex the number of geometrical isomers which are possible is option two option b that is two geometrical isomer can exist for such complexes Next comes another one from the Kahn Ingold Prelog sequence rule that which of the following group has the highest priority according to the sequence rule, Kahn Ingold Prelog sequence rule among these four. So we know that uh, iodine uh, stays at the very top of this sequence rule. So the right answer and hydrogen, of course, at the bottom. So the right answer should be option B, that is iodine. Next is how many stereo isomers are possible for glucose? So we know that the uh, molecular formula 
uh, of glucose C6H12O6 and uh, with that and also we, we may know the structure of this one and uh, with that we have to think how many stereoisomers are possible. So first we have to count how many stereocenters are there. From there on we can assign how many stereoisomers are possible. So the right answer for this one is option B that is 16 stereoisomers are possible for glucose. The 18th question is that chirality resulting from restricted rotation about a single bond is usually known as is it the atropisomerism, achirality, enantiomerism or none of them. So the right answer should be option A that it is known as atropisomerism. Next is enantiomers are stereoisomers that are mirror images which are non-superimposable, superimposable or they don't, enantiomers don't have uh, the mirror image relation with each other or none of them. Okay, so the right answer should be that enantiomers are stereoisomers uh, that, that have the mirror images which are non-superimposable. That is option A is the right answer. The final question of this lecture, the 20th one, is the ability of subcompounds to rotate the plane polarized light is known as is it the atropisomerism? Is it the optical activity or coordination or num none of them? So the right answer of this one is the optical activity. The ability of some compounds which are able to rotate the plane polarized light are known as optical activity and those molecules are optically active, active molecules. So well, thank you for watching TG Chemistry and uh, keep watching TG Chemistry and uh, just press the bell icon uh, for further notification if you like the video and if you want to have more videos in future. Thank you.